before we dive into this issue, I need to say that I know it is an uncomfortable topic. And that is the correct response. Injustice is uncomfortable. However, as free adults, I feel that the very least we can do is talk about it. So tonight, my hope is that those of you who have supported us for many years, you would be encouraged to keep pressing on in your passion and in your commitment to our organization. Those of you hearing about this for the first time, I hope you will be inspired and ready to join us in this fight. So I have four main points that I'm going to focus on this evening. We're just going to go through them. Number one, sex slavery and human trafficking have escalated to unprecedented levels requiring our immediate attention and intervention. Number two, when we talk about sex slavery and human trafficking, we must also include its silent partner, pornography. Number three, I'm going to spend a little time talking about our organization. And lastly, I'm going to give you some suggestions on what you can do. How do you respond to something so big? All right, number one. Sex slavery and human trafficking have reached unprecedented levels requiring our immediate attention and intervention. Today, an estimated 35 to 45 million people live as slaves. This is more slaves than ever before in history. In fact, it is three times more than the total number of slaves extracted from Africa during 400 years of the transatlantic slave trade. The profits of this business are astronomical. Modern-day slavery brings in an estimated $150 billion a year in profit. This is more than the profits of Coca-Cola, Disney, Chevron, General Electric, IBM, Walmart, and ExxonMobil combined. Millions of today's slaves are sex slaves, forced to endure horrendous acts numerous times a day until disease, violence, addictions, or suicide free them from this terror. Half of all sex slaves around the world are children. If you take one thing away from tonight, let it be this. No one, no one living as a sex slave is there by free choice. Globally and here in Alberta, the average age of entry into the sex trade is 12 to 13 years old. No 12-year-old chooses this. It chooses them. In developed countries like Canada, most victims of sex slavery were sexually abused as children. They never had a chance to say no. This early violation destroys their self-worth and distorts their understanding of love and relationships. This makes them easy targets in their preteen years for predators who seek to manipulate and profit off their young bodies. This really hit home for me um, years ago when I was in a room full of women who are participants and we were doing the 12 steps together and they were all one by one sharing their story. And it hit me right there. I was the only one in that room who had not been sexually abused as a child. I didn't even know that was something I should be thankful for. And I feel that was the main reason why I was staff and they were participants. In underdeveloped countries, a complex web of push and pull factors contribute to these victims' lack of choice and inability to protect themselves. Again, when I was in Nepal um, starting Global Wonders, we started with a group of, of women. One girl was so timid, so terrified, she sat underneath the table and could not even say her name. So how and why does this exist in our sophisticated modern world? Sadly, friends, it's basic economics. Demand dictates the supply. And there is an insatiable demand right now for more victims. A demand for younger, a demand for different ethnicities, a demand for girls, a demand for boys, a demand for more desperate, and a demand for cheaper sex slaves. The demand exists in every country and in every small town. Much of this demand comes from the virtual world and the behavior that we are too uncomfortable to talk about. 
Which brings me to my second point. Pornography is sex slavery and human trafficking's silent partner. It endorses the enslavement of women and children and adds a level of humility to their abuse as it is recorded and mass distributed as entertainment. The young women who come to the Essay Foundation for help are often the women and children in those images. So many times we have heard them say that they were being filmed while being abused or that their abuser asked them to enact something that he saw online. Friends, pornography is a key connector for us. Pornography is what brings sex slavery and human trafficking from a distant problem out there to a real threat in our homes, in our families, in our marriages, and to our innocent children. The average age right now that kids are being exposed to pornography is 11. And some research even says six. Not only is it more accessible than ever, it is highly addictive, and it is also more violent than ever. Much of it is torture. If we are not ready when our children stumble upon pornography, it has a potential to ruin their lives. You see, pornography creates victims on both sides of the screen. I'm going to say one more thing on this topic before we move on. And this is to the young people in the room. I'm thrilled you're here. I'm very impressed <clears throat> that you're here. I need you to take a message back to your friends for me. You need to tell them that sexting is not cool. Just because we live in a culture fixated with sex and bodies does not make this okay. You need to be countercultural. You need to be the leaders in your group. And speak out against this. Sexting contributes to a culture obsessed with pornography and increases de the demand for child porn. Some of your classmates may already be struggling with an early or a full-on addiction. You and your friends need to come alongside and help them, not add to their struggle. You young people are the greatest influence among your friends' lives. Use it well. So what does the Essay Foundation actually do? I'm not going to go into great detail because that is in the brochures and also um, our annual reports are out the door, but let me just tell you briefly. The very first one started in Calgary in 1989, and that is by Dominique, who is our founder. After several years of creating programs and services to meet the needs of the women, they were reaching 70% success rate. In 95, Dominique, and at that time Carla as well, left the Calgary program, moved to Vancouver, and started the SA Foundation and World Services in Vancouver. You should know, SAS Calgary still exists. We're separate organizations now. Um, we focus on global development. And in Vancouver, we have a full center where we train leaders from around the world. We also started Global Wonders, which is produced in Nepal, but has its business and marketing base in Vancouver. So that is what we do. That's the logistical answer to what we do. I'm going to read you something that we really do. And this is our, the only reason we exist. Last week, I texted a friend of mine who used to be a participant of ours a long time ago. She's a graduate. And I asked her, what did our programs mean to you? What was it like coming to the home for the first time? This is what she wrote. When I first arrived into the house, it was scary and safe. It was odd I didn't have to sleep on the ground and was not treated as a dog. <clears throat> when I was shown I had an entire bed for only me to sleep on and the door locked and I wouldn't be bothered or told I couldn't sleep. It felt like a thousand pound weight was lifted off my body. I remember enjoying having keys to my new home and a door that would lock. I never knew a home could be safe. Without SA, I don't believe I would have been successful on my road to recovery. So that is what we do. We give women a way out and we help them succeed. We've had 28 years to refine this model. Since then, it has been translated into five different languages. Dominique and Carla and another uh, member of the management team, Steve, who's not here tonight, they travel, not only do they oversee the project in Vancouver and the business, they travel around the world giving training to new teams. 
To date, they have trained 15 teams on our organizational model. We estimate that approximately 1,700 women and 400 children have been freed from slavery through our programs. The cool part is in the next five years, we expect to double this number. But we can't do it alone. We do need your help. Tonight's purpose has been to inform you and now to invite you to do something. So what will you do with this information? What will you do to protect the children in your life from sex slavery's harmful side effects? What will you do to protect the children who fell between the cracks, whose parents could not protect them for one reason or another? It is up to us as free adults to step up and do everything we can to rescue, protect, intervene, love, and invest in every one of these precious lives so they can reclaim a life of dignity and freedom. Now, I've written out some practical steps for you guys because I know it's a lot of information and it is hard to know what to do. So I've given you eight suggestions. I want you to try and check off one of these items before you leave here. And I want to challenge you to check off one more within this next month. These are practical suggestions. Everybody can do them. We must do them. This is where I would start. Number one, talk to your children about resp respecting and protecting their bodies in privacy and that of their friends. This teaching can start as early as two years old and younger, and it must be an ongoing conversation. On the other side of your um, insert is a reading list. The book Diapers to Dating is perfect for number one. Number two, purchase an internet filter software like NetNanny. Number three, establish age-appropriate boundaries in your house for internet use and screen time. And that applies to you and your partner as well. And guess what? Your kids don't have to like it. Mm -hmm. Number four, use your Global Wonders jewelry as an avenue to talk about slavery. Many people still do not know it exists or they do not understand the extent to which it exists. Tell them your jewelry is made by survivors and invite them to sponsor or support what we do. Number five, help us rep the movement by taking a selfie with your Global Wonders jewelry, post it and tag us at hashtag Global Wonders or hashtag SA Foundation. And if you have no idea what I just said, go to the next point. <laughs> That's okay. Some of you know what a hashtag is and how to use it, it's cool. <clears throat> Number six, follow SA Foundation on social media and invite your friends to do the same. The links are there, you can like us and follow us. Number seven, partner with the SA Foundation by becoming a monthly donor. In addition to overseeing the eight global projects, our management team are literally working around the clock to meet the demand for their training. They just finished training a group from Ajax, Ontario, and are halfway through another training with a group from Atlanta, Georgia. Last month, they gave the second level of training to a team from Toronto, where there's a major sex trafficking problem. And they're also exploring projects in Victoria, BC, and Cameroon, Africa. Lastly, it is hard for me to ask you to do one more thing, but, on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves, on behalf of the number of women that we turn away because our beds are full and our rooms are full, I do have to ask you to do one more thing. In addition to buying jewelry tonight, I'd like to ask you to consider making a donation. The reason is this. Right now, the sales of the jewelry covers the cost of the business, but it's not enough yet revenue to cover the cost of our project. So donations go directly to our projects. And um, our goal tonight is to fund a small addition to our Nepali project. Last year, they began accepting women with children. And no surprise, they have quickly reached capacity. And so they needed a separate childcare room during the day for the kids. And we believe in keeping children and moms together as moms recover. And so we always have childcare on site. And so rather than send the kids to another room, they're asking to um, convert the rooftop to a childcare room. And this cost would be $5,000 to complete this room and furnish it. And I'd like to ask for your help to do that tonight. Okay, some of you are wondering, like, how many people are here? Um, I do have some exciting news. Brian and his wife, Lisa, have a foundation called the MacGyver Family Foundation. And they're gonna match donations up to $3,000 tonight. Wow. 
Ja. So please do what you can. If you, I know there are some guys here not into jewelry. You can go straight to the payment table and um, <laughs> do it that way. Um, you can work that out with your wife, but uh, I'll let you guys fight that out. But thank you for listening. Thank you for your courage and your willingness to care. I know it's a big topic. We have no choice but to engage this. The lives of the kids, truly, and ours as well, is at stake. So thank you for your courage. And I do believe this is a battle that we can win and that we can see an end to slavery within our generation. Thank you.